I care about you more than anyone else. That's an unwavering truth, even now. I thought that you'd forgotten. I never said anything of the sort. Greetings once again, my friends, and welcome back to Geek News Anime Night, where we take a season of anime and we go episode by episode, give you guys our thoughts on what we saw. I am your host, Adam Mickelson, a.k.a. Drac. I hope everybody is having an awesome skipped week because we couldn't actually record last week. We actually even had some issues watching the episodes this week. Uh, and joining me this uh, joining me for this podcast is my lovely wife, Andrea. Andrea, how are you? I'm fine. No, you're not. No, yeah. You're not. Yeah, it's winter and I hate it. <laughs> you it's. Winter winter for you is like Garfield with Mondays. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, this time around, after the the impact of episode four, where Hatsuharu, I think, was about to legitimately kill uh, Akito, we then go into episode five, literally titled, I mean, you know, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know what the episode title is, right? Yeah. I'm asking you because it doesn't even say. It says, I mean, you know, right? Mm-hmm. Guys, don't, don't do that. That was that was dumb. Uh, so episode five has the uh, a I, I want to say a bigger revelation, but we have to talk about the biggest revelation of the whole dang thing, which is uh, in this time frame, Momiji has had a bit of a growth spurt. So we actually mentioned this in the intro because they do they do spoil that, but we got to see an older Momiji. This time around. And so I, I think we have to give our thoughts here uh, on on older Momiji. Um, obviously, we need to start with you because, uh, you know, he's he's a male Soma. <clears throat> so at that point, everybody wants to know where he where he rates on the Soma sexiness scale. Um, where, where are you standing with? I don't know if we can call him adult Momiji. It's it's probably like teen, teenager. It's like teen Momiji. Uh, so where where are you standing with him? It's kind of strange seeing him, you know, much uh, on taller a cute, uh, on a cuteness scale is what I mean. Mm -hmm. Much taller. He is much taller. He very much looks like he has a face, uh, kind of like Kurano. Um, they and the voice actor, or yeah, I, th I think it was actually a voice actress. She is doing a deeper accent for a, a deeper voice for him. To make it sound like, well, he he is a boy. Uh, but, but I think most importantly, the biggest shock was um, way back in season one when we had the episode where President Takai was not happy about what Momiji was wearing and how Hatsuharu basically said, you know, eventually he'll grow into it and start wearing... Like, it's like everything Hatsuharu predicted happened. Mm -hmm. And he's wearing boys clothes, too. And, uh, and all the girls are fawning over him. So not only is there a Yuki fan club, but there's al now also a Kyo fan club and now a Momiji fan club. Oh my gosh. Why don't they just all have fan clubs? And they can all get together and have fan clubs of their own. Yep. Um, yeah, it's a little weird, isn't it? <clears throat> and also the, the other thing that doesn't necessarily help is that he's still wearing that bunny backpack that he was wearing as a kid. So it's like, have you really grown up? But yeah, uh, holy moly. Um, and I'd also say that there's a little bit of an attitude adjustment for him. He's not as he's not as um, open and extroverted anymore. He is kind of a little bit more introverted now and does tend to take time to himself. Whereas, you know, when we met Bomiji, like he had no problem with showing Toru and everyone in the classroom that he was the rabbit of the Zodiac kind of thing. And I don't think he's doing that now. Uh, but it's funny to actually see Toru kind of fawn over him uh, because they basically, they, they've become the best of friends. Uh, but that, we had to get that out of the way first because adult Momiji is like the fulcrum of, or the cornerstone of this whole episode. Uh, because everything kind of centers around him. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, we get to see this adult Momiji, and 
uh, immediately how he's he's kind of like Kisa, where she's kind of like the little duckling that follows Toru around. He's just the best friend that follows Toru around. Mm -hmm. Uh, So much so that it, I don't want to say it annoys Yuki and Kyo, but I kind of get the feeling it does. Am I the only one? Yeah, I guess so. It's like, I mean... it's, it's like we got used to in the first two seasons that Kyo and Yuki would be following her around everywhere. Now it's Momiji and Kisa uh, who are doing that, and Yuki and Kyo are too busy to do that. Well, yeah, I guess, but you don't see them like, following in every episode. No, you don't. But in this one especially, we do. Mm-hmm. Um, he even goes back to Shigure's house where they find Hiro and Kisa. And uh, they basically, out of the blue, decide to make curry for dinner. Except, I guess it was barbecue curry, because they had to go outside to make it. Whereas I thought that they could they could do that in the kitchen. Uh, but all of this is basically Momiji's idea. Um, like Because on the way, he wanted to go and get ice cream, plus an ice cream cake which obviously freaked Toru out because expensive. And then make dinner and have a good time. All of this is all kind of prompted by Momiji. Um, to which we, we get a couple of interesting scenes that happen in the meantime. First of all, Kisa actually talks to Kyo. Apparently she's never done that before. But... He was in the episode where she talked to Haru. I would technically call that talking to Kyo, right? Because Kyo was in was in the immediate area. But apparently this was a big thing for her, and so she finally said something to Kyo, and Kyo does a it's like a it's just like a pleasantry, and Kyo kind of responds, and then Kisa's like, Oh my gosh, I did it! Oh my gosh, I did it! Oh my gosh, I did it! Mm-hmm. Um so that happens, plus when dinner is ready, Momichi goes to fetch Kyo, and they actually get into a conversation about Toru. Uh, specifically, that Tor that Kyo needs to basically Momichi prompts him to go confess his feelings for her, because who knows somebody else might do it. Mm-hmm. And considering where this episode led later, did did you? have a conclusion as to why Momichi was bringing this up? Of the whole conversation? Between- yeah, don't, don't let Toru uh, out, of your fi- out of your hands, kind of thing. Well, he probably figures why Kyo seems to be dissing himself. He's like- did, did you get the impression that maybe Momichi might be that person that steals Toru away? I don't know. I got a weird vibe from it. Like, he was almost saying it from a personal perspective. Like, if you don't confess your feelings, who knows? Somebody like me might come along. True. But I think he kind of figures, well, I, I don't know. It just seems kind of weird that he would like, well, yeah, I like her, but he <coughs> was technically younger than Toro. So he'd be the trophy husband? Pretty much. Yeah, Yeah, there you go. Uh, so all of this happens, and then uh, the other big thing that happens with Momiji in this, and this is kind of the the crux of the whole thing, is, well, I, there's no way to not spoil it. Momichi, it looks like Momichi's curse broke. And I don't think we ever really learn why it does. Mm-hmm. But uh, basically we have the same imagery that we did with Hataharu, where we saw like the 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 rope uh, waning a little bit, but in this case, it snaps completely. And I guess it was a dream of Akito, and then Akito just knows that Momiji's curse is broken and rushes over to Momiji's apartment. Mm -hmm. Um, Kind of in the same craze that she was in when when Kurino broke. Mm -hmm. Uh, So at that point, and, and... like what what did you think of that the 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 imagery basically hinting at Momichi's curse breaking? I was kind of shocked really, but just, do you do uh, you have a guess as to what made it happen? I have a guess, but it's because of evidence later in the episode that I'll I'll talk about later, but I I'm just curious if you have a theory as to why Momichi's curse broke. 
I don't know. I'm still and, trying to figure. I, I also want to say, myself. like, did it break? Because, I mean, with Kurino, we have the evidence, right? He hugged Toru and he was able to hug her and not turn into a little sparrow. So at that point, we don't. Sparrow or rooster? Well, apparently his form was like a little sparrow mm. <clears throat> because it, it means like rooster. But I guess there were different kinds of red birds that he that that Zodiac member could take. Mm. And his was a little red sparrow. Um, and so we have that evidence. But with with Momiji, we don't really have it. We just have feelings as evidence. Like, mm. I feel like my curse broke. And so at that point. I mean, is there any reason for us to think that it isn't broken? I can't imagine why he would. Go I, I pretend. think it would have been a better thing to just like have him, like maybe pull Toru aside in a corner somewhere in the school and hug her, and then she kind of gets that his curse broke. But yeah, we don't really get that with him because he because once this happens, because of Akito's outburst, Momiji isolates a little bit mm -hmm. um and i i think for good reason uh because when we, when we see him kind of explaining it he's oh, is he more or less confused than akito i think akito was more worried that he was gonna leave but he was straight up just confused as to why it happened like you know it's, it's his first time and all um yeah, I, I'd explain it as confusion. Because he even says, like, you should go home and get some rest, Akito. I will come and talk to you tomorrow uh, because it's getting late and I need to go to bed. And so it's almost like, you know, he, he didn't really know. And he kind of spends the rest of the day figuring out how he feels about it. And I don't even think he has an answer on it. I mean, free, feel free to chime in if, I, if I'm missing anything. No, I can't. I'm still trying to process that. Really. Yeah, it's it's difficult because at that point, I what what what's more problematic here is we don't know what did it. So, like with Haru, we saw him beating the crap out of Akito, and that's and his anger towards Akito is what frayed it. But we don't see what caused Momiji to do that or to to break entirely. And I mean, granted, we didn't necessarily see that with Kurano either, but yeah, the presumption here is that that happened. Um, Maybe he just thinks he can see his life going in some other way and yeah. has nothing to do with Akito. Maybe that's what caused it to break out. No? But one thing I did find interesting is once his curse breaks, he has no problem standing up for himself with Akito mm -hmm. at all. Like, I mean, I, I'm still going back to the, to the lake house where he got his cheek scratched and he was totally fine with that happening. And this time around, like he wasn't taking any of Akito's shit. Like Akito immediately starts doing the manipulative stuff of like, your mother will always hate you. Da, 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 all of the buttons that she pushes with Momiji, but he wasn't taking any of it. I mean, yeah, he wasn't taking any of it, any of it right? Mm -hmm. He he was basically talking to uh, Akito in a in a rational manner the whole time. So yeah, I get. I guess it is the the zodiac animals that make them take that abuse, mm -hmm. which is just fucked up in a in a way if you think about it. But I mean. I, I kind of like how he handled it in the fact that, like, he, he says that Akito's wrong, that he has no idea where his life is going to go, and, you know, he'll, he'll accept whatever, wherever his life decides to go, but um, I think the best way to be able... To, I, I think Momichi handled Akito the, the way that everybody else should, mm -hmm. including Kurano, which is just like, no, you make no sense, your arguments are dumb, and I'm not saying just say these words, but like, you know, your arguments are exhausting and. And I'm not going to deal with these anymore because you already kind of see that desire to become more independent mm -hmm. from Momiji, which is actually kind of a cool thing to have happen because he has been kind of a clingy person for most of the episode. But now he's wanting to be off on his own. 
And even the other Zodiac spirits are are saying like something's off about Momiji. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- so that tells me that the other spirits feel something about him, but they're not sure what. And I th- correct me if I'm wrong. They said that about Corino, didn't they? That something felt off about him. Yeah, probably. I, it's been so long, I can't remember. But yeah, so we we had that. Um, I, now I'll I'll give you my theory as to what happened with it because. At the beginning of the episode, we find out that Momiji is late to class, and then, you know, he comes in a little bit later. Like, he was late getting in uh, and, and apologized for it and everything like that. But then we find out later in the episode, what I'm guessing is why he was late, which is he decided to take a different route to go to school, which would involve going to his parents' house. And he actually goes to talk to his mom, who, again, doesn't know she that momiji's her son and they actually strike up a conversation about momo because momo's been going over to momiji's apartment to watch him play the violin Mm -hmm. so he's he's been able to get kind of close to her and the mom knows it and so she's she's basically being all pleasant with him Mm -hmm. and he he strikes up a conversation with her about how you know, they're planning to go on a vacation, the three of them, and that makes him a little sad. Because, And she, she actually does ask, are you planning a, fa- a summer trip as well? And he, he kind of just blows it off and says, yeah, my, my family's planning on doing something. And the best part of it was when he was getting ready to walk away after that, like he was, seemed upset, is the mom kind of looks at him with her endearing smile and says, take care of yourself. In a, and I would almost say, like, in a way, in anime that, like, a mother would tell a, tell a son that. Mm-hmm. And I almost wonder if that's what did it. Is that, you know, he's, you know, most of what we know about Momiji is he's been beating himself up about his mom. Um, when it's not really her fault, it's, it's her fault because she couldn't deal with what was going on. Which is understandable. But now he doesn't feel like she hates him. She feels he feels like she wants to get to know him. And so at that point, you know, it may not be a mother son relation relationship, but it's a relationship Mm -hmm. kind of thing. I kind of wonder if that's what made the curse break. Possibly. Although I have a feeling that some people also might bring up because there's a reason I brought this up. It's it's heavily inferred that Momiji has either a crush or is in love with Toru. I think it's a crush. I don't I don't think he's put much thought to it, honestly. But I wonder if a lot of people are thinking that's why the curse broke. Is because he kind of acknowledged his feelings for Toru. I tend to think it's the conversation with his mom. But that's me. Yeah, but didn't the curse break before he had that conversation? No, no. Because if, if I've got the timeline right, the curse didn't break until that night. Mm-hmm. Because if that's the reason he was late to go to school, then that would have been in the morning. Mm. And it happened just as he got home from from Shigure's place that night. Mm. So that's when the curse broke. Uh, So at that point, no, it wouldn't have happened, but maybe it started the process. Mm. I have no evidence on this, but that's just the the gut instinct that I'm getting. And as much as I'd like to say that there's more stuff that gets that gets handled here, uh, we do learn a little bit more about Shigure and and his weird tw- twisted relationship with Akito. <clears throat> also just how weird and twisted he is. He's um I hate to say it, but the the way that they're painting Shigure, he's kind of a sociopath. He's never really had attachment to his parents, he's never really had attachment to his friends. Um the only one that he's ever had some kind of attachment for is Akito. A- except he still likes to mess with her. So yeah, we, we learn a little bit of that, but I don't want to say we learn too much. It's a little weird to hear him say that uh, he doesn't really have any affection towards his parents. But you, you, you gave me an odd look there. You, you didn't you did you expected that or. No. OK, um, I'm trying to think the other. Big, oh, yeah. And, and then we had the cock block at the beginning of the episode. Because Yuki and Machi were about to kiss, and then Bimbo Girl interrupted it. Awkward. No, not awkward. I'd slap that girl. Mm-hmm. I would. 
okay? If I was actually in that world and I saw them inching in for a kiss, yeah, right on the cheek. Right, it, it's, not even a, it's not even a hand at that point. It's a fist. Mm -hmm. I am punching her in the face for the literal cock block that she just did to Yuki mm. and Machi. The fuck, woman? Well, how do you like them being a couple if they did ever become... I, I like where it's going. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of do. That's why I wanted to see that happen. And... Bimbo bitch did it again! Mm -hmm. Um, She really is starting to annoy me. <clears throat> I mean, I, I can deal with Baneba, but I, I cannot deal with any of the other student council members. I can't. They drive me crazy. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, yeah, th that's pretty much it. I'm... Uh, am I missing anything? It, it was pretty much the cornerstone here was Momichi. Yeah. It was adult Momichi. And we, we got little moments here and there. We even got to see Hiro. Man, I was really hoping he wasn't a little pissant and all that all that he grew out of. But no, we got to see a little bit of the pissant in this episode. Yeah, but probably not as bad compared to when Not he... as bad. We're just like, oh, I kind of wish. But he's still. I kind of wish that it, you know, left without a trace. And no, he's still a little bit of a pissant, even as a teenager. Son of a bitch. Yeah, but sometimes he even says he knows, he acknowledges his faults for... Okay. So at that point, uh, just kind of wrap this up, best moment of the episode. I think the whole conversation between Omiji and... Which one? The the one where it just broke or the one where he confronts him? Or her? I, I was saying more like with the, the mom. Oh, the, oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought you were going with Akito. No, you're talking about the conversation with the mom. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and your reason for it, just because it was wholesome it, or it was just a nice moment. Okay. Um I'm I'm gonna say my best moment was him confronting Akito. Because we haven't seen anybody do it. Well, I mean, we've seen Haru do it, but Haru, you still kind of get this sense of desperation. Um, and I, I wonder if it's because of his zodi his zodiac spirit was fighting it off. But Momichi is calm and rational and realizes that Akiko, Akito can't do anything to him anymore. And I think that's the better one. I Because it, it just shows Akito as the meaningless person that we've all kind of guessed she is. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like that one. What was the worst moment of the, of the episode? Worst or weakest, however you want to do it. I'm going to say Momiji hinting to Kyo that he would take Toro away. That, that was weird. Because it wasn't going to happen. Well, I still didn't like the whole thing when he was trying to act like he was like, yep, I'm all grown up, and yet he's still um, carrying that little buddy backpack around. Oh, God, yes. It's like, come on. It made it even worse when they showed him like going into class. He's like, hello, study up late. And he's got the bunny back. I'm like, oh, my, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm like, really? And, and you see the teacher, like, hit him with the book. And I'm like, harder! Hit him harder! <laughs> so, okay, so that's the worst moment of it. Uh, funniest moment. Because this is a humorous series. Mm. There really isn't one. Well, well, wasn't there that one scene where uh, they were do something and Har Haru was having that image in his head or something? And I can't remember what it was. They were all thinking something, and they're like, oh. oh, you mean when he was, like, talking about making the barbecue? Or something like that. And he was, like, he was basically going to break Shigure's ta table to make the firewood for it. I don't know, but it went, like, you know, it was, like, that black and white, and they're, like, mm, and they're, like, like, it was some kind of a joke or something. Because there, there's two, th there are two thoughts that I'm thinking of with this. There was the one where he was in school, and he had some weird thoughts about Momiji. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. And then there was the one where he was going to break the table, and Yuki stopped him. I mean, both of them are great, you know. Haru's weird. Mm -hmm. Haru's weird. Um, I know some people might want me to say, like, Kisa speaking to Kyo, but... That, well, that, that was... That wasn't entirely hilarious. That was just kind of weird. Oh, yeah, she's, like, trying to say, nice to see you again or something. Yeah, she's... it was something like that. It's and, good to see you again. And and, and and she's, like, trying to say it, and it's like, come on, you could just say it. like. Yeah, it, so it's not necessarily funny. Um. Yeah, I can't really think of a funny moment for this one, because 
a lot of it was just but that's the thing with this season too it, it's a much more somber season um yeah i can't really think of it so uh out of five stars what would we what would we rate this um i'm probably gonna go four because in my opinion the previous episode was better just because of black haru kicking the crap out of akito um there, there's just satisfaction there <laughs> Uh, it, for just because yeah it, it was good but it was also confusing at the same time and, and the other part too is like yeah adult momichi is cool but this is a character i'm not invested in mm -hmm. he annoyed the crap out of me when he was a little cute cutie pie and now that he's an adult i mean he's fairly compelling the fact that the, the only thing that's compelling with me with me to him is the fact this curse is broken that's mm -hmm. it um aside from that i still find momiji to be fairly annoying so at that point it's just yeah and he's the cornerstone of the episode so that just kind of holds it back for me uh so yeah four four out of five and i think that's gonna go ahead and do it for this episode so thank you so much for joining us guys when we come back it will be uh episode six which uh if i remember from the episode heading for it i think we're finally going to have a moment a solid moment between you, uh, between Kyo and Toru. So we're finally going to get what we're asking for. Hopefully this happens, but until then, thank you guys so much for supporting this podcast. Make sure to subscribe to the RSS feed. If you guys haven't already, you guys can listen to it on YouTube a little bit later than everybody else, but you could also listen on Apple podcasts, Google podcasts, Amazon podcasts, Spotify and player.fm. Make sure to support the RSS feed. We definitely appreciate that. And we will see you guys for the next episode as we take on episode six of Fruits Basket season three. Mm -hmm.